Welcome to the Muslim Entrepreneurs Network. I'm Harun Rashid, one of the co-founders. Uh, today I have with me Chef Tofik Chowdhury, all the way from Malaysia. He's visiting here in London. Had a very busy schedule for the last couple of days. I managed to uh, you know, sit him down to ask him a couple of questions regards to business, Islam, and, and, and Muslim. Chef, welcome. Jazakallah khair for joining me. Jazakallah khair, my uh, pleasure. And, and thank you very much for taking some time out to, to have this uh, you know, small conversation with me. Alhamdulillah. So, Sheikh, I know you're a great advocate uh, of, of entrepreneurship and business, and you really encourage people to go into that. Can I just ask why that's the case? Why do you do that? Well, you see, um, the Prophet uh, was a great businessman, and uh, one of the ways that he actually found his wife was through business. Um, and uh, he was ethical, he was an amazing um, entrepreneur, uh, he made more money than all of the other businessmen. Uh, Khadija anha was surprised through that. Uh, we also find Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, telling us in the Quran, وَلَا يَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ لِلْكَافِرِينَ عَلَى الْمُسْلِمِينَ سَبِيلًا Allah will not give the disbelievers a hand over the believers. Many of the scholars of the seer explain this hadith to mean that, that Muslims must be self-sufficient uh, and that they have to have the upper hand. Um, also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to give charity in the Quran. How many times have you found, How can you give zakat or sadaqa or any type of charity if you don't have any money? Um, and, uh, and, and everything about the deen tells us that those who give and help others are far better than those who don't. So alhamdulillah, I sincerely encourage it. It's the way of the prophets of God. It's the way of the righteous people, the scholars of Islam, whether it be Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, Abdullah ibn Mubarak, uh, uh, Imam Muslim, An Nasai, Rahimallah, they were all great business people. So there's nothing wrong with business, alhamdulillah. Uh, there's a wrong with how many people do business, but there's nothing wrong with business itself. It gives you self sufficiency, it gives you dignity, it gives you honor, uh, it gives you time, uh, alhamdulillah, and it gives you wealth and money to do what you want to do and to do and to achieve your purpose, inshallah. Sheikh, I, I come across a lot of Muslims in our community and a predominant thought uh, and a mindset that I find in Muslims is that they think wealth is a bad thing and they despise people who are wealthy, you know, and, and there's a negative approach towards that. Uh, yeah. Is that something you support? No, not at all. I think this is a, this is a defeatist mentality. It's a, it, it's a mentality that's born out of a little bit of jealousy and a little bit of ignorance, you know. You put jealousy and ignorance together, you get a toxic mixture, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and, and this is an attitude which is uh, totally unfounded. The Sahaba of the Prophet Sallallahu uh, never used to hate wealth. Uh, they, they used to hate the fact that people hoarded wealth without giving. Yes, they hated that. But to actually make money, no, that was not, the, not no problem, no problem at all. I mean, Abu Bakr anhu, <clears throat> he purchased over four of the Ashram Mubashirin. He, he, he helped them, uh, you know, either accept Islam or he helped them, uh, uh, you know, free themselves from slavery. We have, uh, we have uh, Bilal ibn, uh, ibn Rabi'ah, yani, Abu, who helped them, Abu Bakr did. And who bought the, the masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. So the Sahaba were never against actually making money. They were against hoarding money, yeah? Hoarding money and then doing it for the wrong reasons. Uh, I'm a great advocate of making as much money as you can. As much money, I mean, I don't say millions. I was like, I actually get frustrated with people who just want to make millions. Yeah. I say, you know what, you don't deserve my time, go away. Yeah. yeah. And I want to speak to people who want to make a lot more than that, you know, into billions and more. Um, there's a research that was done about the number of billionaires, about 2,000 something, 2,400 something billionaires worldwide now. And more than half of them made their money from rags to riches story, rags to riches. And these people are now using their wealth for that which Allah is not pleased with. Yeah. Uh, why can't we use, make lots of money and use it for that which Allah is pleased with? Yeah. We, ha we have many of the Sahaba. The first uh, bank in, in Islam was Zubair ibn Awam, who was a very strong, mighty man, and everyone wanted to put wealth with Zubair. Uh, and so Zubair uh, became the first bank. When he died, he left 56 uh, 56 uh, you know, million US dollars worth each for inheritance for each of his wives. He had four wives, that's 136th of the wealth. 136th of his wealth was worth 56 million US dollars. How much money do you have? Are you going to Jannah? He's going to Jannah, inshallah. And on top of that, 
you know what I'm saying, he gave that much wealth and he left that much behind for his, yeah. for his family. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say? So we have to drop this defeatist, weak, cheap mentality away from us. We have to make wealth and we must remember to give loads of it away. I mean, I would like to revive the sunnah of Abu Bakr and Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. The sunnah of giving 50% away, and the sunnah of giving 100% away. And if you ask, uh, you know, Warren Buffett and others, they've given 99% of their wealth away yeah. because they are doing entrepreneurship because of fun. It's a lot of fun to make this wealth and this money in the halal way, inshallah. And then, alhamdulillah, giving it away is even more exciting. Fantastic. Now, uh, from all the stories of the prophets and the sahabas uh, that relate to entrepreneurship and business and wealth, which is your favorite and why is that your favorite? Whew. I guess uh, there's a lot that's, that's my favorite. I think the one that's favorite is Abdurrahman Rahman Right. It's my favorite because he became wealthy through good values. And something that we've forgotten, the great strategy that he employed was, um, was to be as transparent and as pro-customer oriented, customer oriented focus as possible. So Abdurrahman Rahman Da'auf radiallahu ta'ala anhu made money through horses. Right. So he was a horse merchant. And no one used to buy horses except from Abdurrahman Na'auf. The reason why was, be was because Abdurrahman Na'auf, when you wanted to buy a horse uh, from him, he would, <clears throat> you know, you would go and say, okay, Abdurrahman, how much is this horse? So he'd go, uh, yeah, this horse is a thousand dinars, you know, a thousand gold coins. So a person would be, you know, getting the money out, is about to pay because, you know, it's already a good price. Yeah. Uh, because he's, you know, he's, he's into horses, he can monopolize the market, you know, because he has so many horses. Like a great, great variety, great choice, so people can buy. But then what he would do is, no, no, hold on, hold on, don't pay me a thousand, don't pay me a thousand. Uh, look over here, there's a little bit of a chip in the teeth and look, some hairs are missing from the, from the, yeah. from the tail. And look, uh, the hoofs, there's a little bit of problem, it's a bit rusted. Uh, and by the way, it's uh, not a fully Arabian horse. Okay. It's mother's uh, Indian. You know, I'm, I'm just... <laughs> he was I'm just honest. Yeah, he, I'm just adding it on. I mean, I'm, I'm imagining that's how he was. But what was noted was Abdurrahman would keep on, anhu, would keep on putting the price down Wow. And for pointing out the faults, can wow. you imagine how he's looking at what he's yeah. doing? Pointing out the faults until the people would say, no, Abdurrahman, I want to force, I can't do this. I can't keep taking it like this. I want to force you, you know, out of brotherhood. So he would show brotherhood, they would show brotherhood back. So no one would buy horses from anyone but Abdurrahman, right? Yeah. And so therefore, you know, you... He had more customers. <laughs> he had more customers, right? So, and that's the, that's the trick of the game. It's to, it's to make little, but a lot, right? I mean, I, I have a friend... Um, uh, who was a multi-billionaire in Saudi, and I said, how the heck did you make that much money? You know, yeah. I asked these questions to all of them, right? He's 46, and said, so, you know, he has 17 billion Saudi riyals worth of uh, income uh, and wealth. And the other day, he, uh, he bought a property, uh, and he went in there, and then the guy came, hey, this is already yours, you don't even know. So he bought his own property. <laughs> <laughs> Funny guy, he's got so much property in Riyadh. So he goes, um, my trick? was different from everyone else. Everyone buys property and then they hold on to it and then they wait for a year or two to make 10, 15%, whatever. Me, I don't care. I make the 5% and I sell quick. Right. But I make 5%. But you try now, 5%, six times a year, compared to you know, one property with 15% margin at, uh, you know, over one year, right. who makes more money? I said, yeah, I make money. And he said, the hidden benefit which no one realizes is that at 5% if you're selling and you're selling more, all the real estate agents they know that, hey, anyone wants to sell property, no one's money, who to go to? Go to Mr. Muhammad, you know? Muhammad, he knows, he's always buying property and he's always selling. So I became the number one guy that everyone came to. Right. So all the best deals came to me. Right. But I made the tiniest of profits from all of them, but I made billions because I moved it quick. Mashallah. So subhanAllah, you know, that's, uh, we've got to think about this. Right. So say if somebody uh, is uh, thinking of getting into business and want to make wealth and got encouraged by seeing wealthy people, what should be his biggest motivation to want to do that? Biggest motivation should be giving to the cause of Allah. Right. Biggest motivation. I mean, I was, uh, I spoke to uh, one, another billionaire. I mean, I don't speak to millionaires anymore. It's like, <laughs> what the heck am I going to do with that? You if know? you're in a whole different league. <laughs> it's true, because my grandma's a millionaire, you know? Yeah, if, you, if my grandma sells a house, she'll make a million. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, okay, what am I going to learn from a grandma? <laughs> so let me go learn from, you know, multi-billionaires. So this guy is the richest man in all of Malaysia. And he told me, uh, you know, he said that he was, it's a racks to riches story yeah. again. Ten years old, he came from Yemen, okay, on a boat came to the shores of Malaysia, and the first thing he did is sold his shoes, didn't have shoes, and he went and he bought some rice. Then a little bit of training, a little bit of trading, and he made some money, yeah? 
and he went to his mom. At the end of the day, he went to his mom and he said, Mom, I made 10 ringgit, you know, 10 ringgit is like, it was like one and a half, one and a half pounds, right? And his mom said, give half of it in sadaqah. Okay, he said, I'll give half of it in sadaqah. So the, so the man said, listen, and this is a typical attitude that you're gonna find the entrepreneurs having, yeah? Which is wrong, yeah? And you gotta get this out of your system. He said, mom, can I, can't I save the 10 ringgit now and reinvest it? And I'll keep doing more and more and more. And so I'll have more money to give eventually rather than me now give the five ringgit right now. He said, no, my son. She said, no, my son. He said, the reason why you made money is Allah gave you barakah, yeah? Money is an opportunity from Allah. Making money is an opportunity from Allah. You make more money from opportunity than you make from your capital investment. How many times have you, you know, an entrepreneur, entrepreneur skill is to make money from nothing, correct? He looks at an opportunity, he sees money there. It's not because he has got capital that makes him money. No, it's because he's an opportunity. And that's the whole point. The whole point about entrepreneurship is to make money, right? Without your own money, yeah? Using other people's money, right? And an opportunity, it's the opportunity from Allah that makes you money. Not the fact that, okay, I've got a million, that's reinvested in the next two million. No, that's, that's an that's a easy way out. You want to be a true entrepreneur, you want to make money, you're going to make money from nothing. And so as a result, give it away. I'm not asking that you give tons and tons and tons, but I am asking give 50% away, give 20% away. And I have met a group of people now whose growth strategy for their business is sadaqah. Their growth strategy, they said, my growth strategy is sadaqah. My growth strategy is sadaqah. I mean, I've unbelievable people, unbelievable people, the amount of sadaqah they give. Yeah. And we have to revive this. We have to revive this. So, Sheikh, I know you've started so many projects, uh, mashallah, uh, and, 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 uh, and all the projects are monetized so they can run on themselves. When you think about starting a project, um, you know, do you ever think about that it might fail? Does it cause any kind of concern for you? And how do you overcome that fear of failing? Because that's something everybody kind of don't take any action because they're afraid they might just fail. Yeah, I, I guess... You know, you could also die when you drive your car. You know what I'm trying to say? You could have, a, I don't know, piano falling from the roof uh, when you're walking down the road. You could eat something that had some bug. You know, you could die from that. You, you know what I'm trying to say? You could walk down the road and get mugged. But like, when does it stop? When does it stop? People who are afraid are going to be always afraid. You know what I'm trying to say? The, the, the thing that you should be afraid of, uh, the thing that you should be afraid of is, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes your ability to take risks. Yeah? Risk itself is not wrong. I mean, how do, you become, how do you become brave? Bravery is conquering fear, right? So you have to have fear in the first place to become brave because then you conquer the fear, become brave, yeah? So an entrepreneur is a brave man because he's conquered the fear, he's had fear, he's conquered it. Become brave, yeah? And Islam tells us to be brave. We don't wanna be cowards. We've lived our life as cowards for too long. You're a coward, the one who doesn't want to leave his job. You're a coward, the one who says, you know what, I don't have money and you know, I've got to pay rent and all that. Oh, yeah, what, 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 you, you know, we don't have to pay rent, or the other entrepreneurs don't have to pay rent. Figure this out, man. You're, you're a smart man, you know, and most people are just too happy with status quo. Mm -hmm. And they're just getting their rent paid and they're happy and, you know, ma salama, right? But, but someone who wants a bigger piece of Jannah knows that the rent for the Jannah has to be paid now, the, the, the property has to be purchased now, the, the, the mahar of yuhurul ayn have to be paid now. Those people, they are courageous. So my sincere advice is to build courage. If you can't build courage, you're too, cow too difficult, then hang around with people who are courageous. You know, you have to take risks. It's not reckless to take risks. It's reckless to take reckless risks. Okay, risk itself should be second nature. Should be second nature. Well, we'll calculate the risk and then... then yeah, because look at the greater risk to your life. You've taken the risk of working for this business and you're getting a, a bit of a payment out. Now you're just like, you know, happy and sitting down. That's not, the, that's not who we are. We are better than that. We're better than that. I, I wish for a time when, you know, I mean, you know, when people lose their jobs, right? Yeah. Everyone says, oh, man, I lost my job. You know, for me, wallahi, uh, you know, and I've been quoted on TV and on, uh, on radio saying, Alhamdulillah, Muslims are losing their jobs. Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbi, Muslims, are, Alhamdulillah. It's true. Alhamdulillah, they lost their jobs. Finally, they're going to get out of the backside and try and do something about it. You know what I'm trying to say? Right. Yeah. Sometimes because people it, just need a knock in order to... They do. Uh, they need a knock. And and alhamdulillah. Yes. And it's not to say that everyone's going to make money through business. I know that. But at the end of the day, there's some business or the other that everyone can do. 
Most people now just create a business for a job. Yeah. They need a job, so they create a business, and the business is actually a job for them. We don't want that. We want more than that. And I'm sure these sort of people, they've taken the, 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 the hard step of wanting to work for themselves. People like you through the, uh, through the Muslim Entrepreneur Network should help them. Yeah. People like me should help them. I mean, my personal goal has been that I'm going to create 10,000 Muslim millionaires, inshallah. inshallah. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Inshallah. And you're going to help me do it, inshallah. Yeah. We're going to do it together, inshallah. inshallah. So I have one last final question. Yeah. Now, perhaps inshallah. maybe just two, if I can squeeze one more in. Inshallah. This is that obviously entrepreneurship uh, requires an entrepreneur to build up and learn the kind of, uh, you know, the, uh, you know, certain kind of skills. And there's so many. If you were to just say, round off all of them and, and, and put a single one main skill that an entrepreneur needs to develop, what would you say that should be? Networking. Right. Yeah. Uh, I would say networking. I would say so many things, but I think nothing helps you to learn more like networking. Like when you just sit with good people, you have an ability to, to network, you will eventually make money. I mean, you know, your net wealth is 10 of your friends divided by 10. Yeah. Okay? So it's the same thing with your iman. 10 of your friends, what is their iman, what is their faith, how much you practice with Islam, divide that by 10, that's your faith. Is that right? That's right. The same way as your net wealth in, in wealth as well. So get really good at networking, get really good at, at having that. I mean, you know, I'm so busy with my dawah work, right? I'm a medical doctor um, and I'm busy with the dawah work. But, you know, I'm talking to people now about launching hospitals and I'm talking to people about, you know, I'm trying to say I've got a 500 bed hospital that I'm about to launch. I'm talking to business people about, uh, you know, buying large stock from Bangladesh and selling them in, you know, I'm making $100 million deals every day. I'm, I'm helping business people uh, make, uh, make all of that. Money comes for you. Uh, and the way to do it is to keep your networking up, inshallah. Make really good networks, inshallah. And my last and final you'll, get, you'll get wealthy, inshallah. My, yeah. my last and final question, uh, yeah. sorry to interrupt you, Chef, is that what would you say is the top three habits that one needs to embody to be successful in, in, in business? Top three habits. Okay, top three habits. Well, first of all, uh, spend money on educating yourself. How much money do you spend educating yourself about making money, for example? Okay. Um, I spend about fourteen to fifteen thousand dollars every year on educating myself on entrepreneurial skills, on skills required to make wealth and money, on leadership skills, stuff that has, that is going to help me be, attain strength. You know, that's still. I mean, I'm, I'm nearly forty. At that age, I'm still spending fourteen, fifteen thousand. How much are you spending? And so, you know, most people say, okay, oh yeah, I bought that book. Yeah, rich dad, poor dad. So what the heck are you doing, rich dad, poor dad? Now you're buying it. You know what I'm trying to say? Oh, yeah, yeah, I bought the cash quadrant. Now you're buying it? Oh, yeah, yeah, I bought, uh, I don't know, uh, make a million before lunch. Now you're buying it? I mean, what, just one book? That's 10 pounds. I'm spending 15,000 on myself and education. How much are you spending? It's important that you do. Uh, so it's really important that you learn about new techniques, new strategies uh, of, of that. So education, 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 yeah? Education, education, education. Find out how to, how to save tax. Find out uh, how the new rich are living. Find out where the best strategies are. Find out what the best uh, you know, options for uh, property investments are. You know what I'm trying to say? Educate, 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 educate. It's really critical. And I say minimum of $10,000 pounds, $10, every entrepreneur must spend on himself or herself every year. That's, that's rule number one. Rule number two, uh, I would say that you need a mentor. Everyone needs a mentor, like a... Uh, just a Jibreel, Ali for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, yeah. someone to whip your backside and get you moving, you know, uh, someone who is helping you so that you don't fall into the love and desire of wealth. Um, you know, I'm a mentor for a lot of great people, and uh, Alhamdulillah, a lot of my mentors have made tons of money, you know. Yeah. Me, myself, I've been busy with social entrepreneurship because for me, that's my empowerment because I've made so much money already in, uh, in, others, in other ways that it's like, yeah, you know what, I'll make money later, but now I want to help the Ummah make money or help the Ummah launch projects, you know. That's why, Alhamdulillah, I've been able to launch the other stuff. So get a mentor. A mentor is extremely important. I think it's a great habit and a great skill. Uh, they will summarize hundreds of books for you in a word, a word of advice. Sometimes they'll be able to see something that is so apparent to them that is, that, that is that difficult to you because you are in the problem. And finally, uh, they will direct you, inshallah. So, What's, who's a good mentor? A good mentor is someone who gives you time, someone who uh, has the right values. So you don't want a mentor who's like a you know, money-hungry maniac, uh, but you want a mentor who's doing it for the right reasons, so he'll always help you with your class, inshallah. 
Finally, you want a mentor who has made money ethically, you know, and not, uh, not the haram ways, a lot of haram ways to make money. Uh, the, the, the third skill I would say uh, is get into the habit of early charity, early charity. Don't wait for later. And give sadaqah early, just like uh, Mr. Bukhari, the, great, the richest man of Malaysia did, he gave sadaqah early. And I know of, of many of the wealthiest of people, or the ones that Allah has thrown in my, my path, the billionaires, I'm not talking millionaires, I'm talking about billionaires, they have made money through sadaqah. Right. Yeah, when and the attribute early, they're giving. What, what do you mean by that? Like for example, um, a younger age? Yeah, like yesterday I met a brother who, uh, you know, he told me about how he was totally on his last 50 pounds and, you know, and then he did this ridiculous stuff, uh, you know, gymnastics with his uh, knowledge and skills that he had, and he made 20,000 pounds yeah. just like that. So I was going to ask him, how much of it did you give from sadaqah? Perhaps he was thinking, no, no, I got to have my rent paid and I got to buy my first car and etc. Those things are going to come. Your, your point is you should have looked at that as an opportunity. Allah threw that opportunity at you to see what you're going to do with that money. So give something away. Give something away. I mean, I would, I would encourage 20% to be given away in sadaqah, you know, uh, or half of it. You know, I mean, I, I generally, uh, myself, I've told my own children, for example, saying, uh, my children, uh, I'm going to give you great education, inshallah. I'm going to help you launch your first business. Yeah. I'm going to help you to do all of that. Yeah? But you're not going to get any of my wealth. Mm -hmm. You're not going to, don't ever expect I'm going to leave anything behind. Mm -hmm. Because if I leave wealth behind for you, mm -hmm. and you don't know how to make wealth, you're going to spoil it anyway. Yeah. And if you already know how to make wealth, then why do you need my wealth anyway? Right. So it's like, so you don't need mine, so go away. <laughs> okay, my wealth is for the Ummah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yeah? But, but I am going to do my haq. My responsibility to you, I'm going to give you fantastic education. I'm going to make sure you, you have the world in your hand and Allah in your heart. You know, that's what I told them. And so, my, mashallah, all my kids are already uh, very much aware. From now on, they're launching their businesses. They are 14 years old. My son's launched his first business and made his first, first 2,000, 3,000 ringgit already. Now he's thinking, okay, what am I going to do? I said, son, you know, invest early invest early and you know savings is more important blah 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 and so teaching him some yeah. some strategies inshallah ta'ala that I learned only when I'm late you know I learned it in my 30s yeah. but he's learning it when he's 14 you know what I'm saying inshallah he'll do a better job than me inshallah Sheikh Jazakallah khair for sharing some awesome bits of information and I'm sure our audience out there are gonna love uh, uh, and enjoy and actually benefit so much from what they've just heard um, I, I wish pleasure. you all the best for the rest of your trip, inshallah. Zakallah khair. Hope to see you soon, inshallah. Zakallah khair. Zakallah khair. Thanks a lot. Salam. My pleasure. Assalamu alaikum.